Solar sails are a form of spacecraft propulsion using the radiation pressure from stars to push large ultra-thin mirrors to high speeds. Light sail could also be driven by energy beams to extend their range of operations, which is strictly beam sailing rather than solar sailing. Solar sail craft offer the possibility of low-cost operations combined with long operating lifetimes. Since they have few moving parts and use no propellant, they can potentially be used numerous times for delivery of payloads. Solar sails use a phenomenon that has a proven, measured effect on spacecraft. Solar pressure affects all spacecraft, whether in interplanetary space or in orbit around a planet or small body. A typical spacecraft going to Mars, for example, will be displaced by thousands of kilometers by solar pressure, so the effects must be accounted for in trajectory planning, which has been done since the time of the earliest interplanetary spacecraft of the 1960s. Solar pressure also affects the attitude of a craft a factor that must be included in spacecraft design. The total force exerted on an 800 by 800 meter solar sail, for example, is about 5 newtons at Earth's distance from Sol, making it a low thrust propulsion system, similar to spacecraft propelled by electric engines. History of concept, Johannes Kepler observed that comet tails point away from the Sun and suggested that the Sun caused the effect. In a letter to Galileo in 1610, he wrote, provide ships or sails adapted to the heavenly breezes, and there will be some who will brave even that void. He might have had the comet tail phenomenon in mind when he wrote those words, although his publications on comet tails came several years later. James Clerk Maxwell, in 1861 a Euro 64, published his theory of electromagnetic fields and radiation, which shows that light has momentum and thus can exert pressure on objects. Maxwell's equations provide the theoretical foundation for sailing with light pressure. So by 1864, a physics community and beyond new sunlight carried momentum that would exert a pressure on objects. Jules Verne, in From the Earth to the Moon, published in 1865, wrote there will someday appear velocities far greater than these, of the planets and the projectile, of which light or electricity will probably be the mechanical agent. We shall one day travel to the moon, the planets, and the stars. This is possibly the first published recognition that light could move ships through space. Given the date of his publication and the widespread, permanent distribution of his work, it appears that he should be regarded as the originator of the concept of space sailing by light pressure, although he did not develop the concept further. Byrne probably got the idea directly and immediately from Maxwell's 1864 theory. Piotr Lebedev was first to successfully demonstrate light pressure, which he did in 1899 with a torsional balance. Ernest Nichols and Gordon Hull conducted a similar independent experiment in 1901 using a Nichols radiometer. Albert Einstein provided a different formalism by his recognizing the equivalence of mass and energy. He simply wrote P equals EC as the relationship between the momentum, the energy, and the speed of light. Svantianias predicted in 1908 the possibility of solar radiation pressure distributing life spores across interstellar distances, the concept of panspermia. He apparently was the first scientist to state that light could move objects between stars. Friedrich Sonder published a technical paper that included technical analysis of solar sailing. Sonder wrote of using tremendous mirrors of very thin sheets, and using the pressure of sunlight to attain cosmic velocities. J. B. S. Haldane speculated in 1927 the invention of tubular spaceships that would take humanity to space and how wings of metallic foil odd a square kilometer or more in area were spread out to catch the sun's radiation pressure. J. D. Bernal wrote in 1929, a form of space sailing might be developed which used the repulsive effect of the sun's rays instead of wind. A space vessel spreading its large, metallic wings, acres in extent, to the full might be blown to the limit of Neptune's orbit. Then, to increase its speed, it would tack, close hauled, down the gravitational field, spreading full sail again as it rushed past the Sun. The first formal technology and design effort for a solar sail began in 1976 at Jet Propulsion Laboratory for a proposed mission to rendezvous with Halley's Comet. Physical Principles, Solar Radiation Pressure 
solar radiation exerts a pressure on the sail due to reflection and a small fraction that is absorbed. The absorbed energy heats the sail, which re-radiates that energy from the front and rear surfaces. The momentum of a photon or an entire flux is given by P equals EC, where E is the photon or flux energy, P is the momentum, and C is the speed of light. Solar radiation pressure is calculated on an irradiance value of 1361 at WM2 at 1 AU, as revised in 2011, perfect absorbance, F equals 4.54 AI 1 quarter N per square meter, perfect reflectance, F equals 9.08 AI 1 quarter N per square meter A, normal to surface, A perfect sail is flat and has 100% specular reflection. An actual sail will have an overall efficiency of about 90%, about 8.25 AI 1 quarter Newton per meter 2, due to curvature, wrinkles, absorbance, re-radiation from front and back, non-specular effects, and other factors. The force on a sail and the actual acceleration of the craft vary by the inverse square of distance from the sun, and by the square of the cosine of the angle between the sail force vector and the radial from the sun, so, F equals F O cos 2 I slash R2, where R is distance from the sun in AU. An actual square sail can be modeled as, F equals F O per Rankine 2. Note that the force and acceleration approach zero generally around I equals 60 a degree rather than 90 a degree as one might expect with an ideal sail. Solar wind, the flux of charged particles blown out from the sun, exerts a nominal dynamic pressure of about 3 to 4 n par three orders of magnitude less than solar radiation pressure on a reflective sail. Sail parameters, sail loading is an important parameter, which is the total mass divided by the sail area, expressed in GM2. It is represented by the Greek letter of Florin. A sail craft has a characteristic acceleration, ac, which it would experience at 1 AU when facing the sun. It is related to aerial density by AC equals 8.25 slash I florin, in millimeter per second 2, the lightness number, I, is the dimensionless ratio of maximum vehicle acceleration divided by the sun's local gravity. Using the values at 1 AU, I equals AC slash 5.93, the table presents some example values. Payloads are not included. The first two are from the detailed design effort at JPL in the 1970s. The third, the lattice sailor, might represent about the best possible performance level. The dimensions for square and lattice sails are edges. The dimension for heliodoro is blade tip to blade tip. Attitude control, an active attitude control system is essential for a sail craft to achieve and maintain a desired orientation. The required sail orientation changes slowly in interplanetary space, but much more rapidly in a planetary orbit. The ACS must be capable of meeting these orientation requirements. Attitude control is achieved by a relative shift between the craft's center of pressure and its center of mass. This can be achieved with control vanes, movement of individual sails, movement of a control mass, or altering reflectivity. Holding a constant attitude requires that the ACS maintain a net torque of zero on the craft. The total force and torque on a sail or set of sails, is not constant along a trajectory. The force changes with solar distance and sail angle, which changes the billow in the sail and deflects some elements of the supporting structure, resulting in changes in the sail force and torque. Sail temperature also changes with solar distance and sail angle, which changes sail dimensions. The radiant heat from the sail changes the temperature of the supporting structure. Both factors affect total force and torque. To hold the desired attitude the ACS must compensate for all of these changes. Constraints, in Earth orbit, solar pressure and drag pressure are typically equal at an altitude of about 800 km, which means that a sail craft would have to operate above that altitude. Sail craft must operate in orbits where their turn rates are compatible with the orbits, which is generally a concern only for spinning disk configurations. Sail operating temperatures are a function of solar distance, sail angle, reflectivity, and front and back emissivities. A sail can be used only where its temperature is kept within its material limits. Generally, a sail can be used rather close to the sun, 
around 0.25 AU, or even closer if carefully designed for those conditions. Applications Potential applications for sailcraft range throughout the solar system, from near the Sun to the comet clouds beyond Neptune. The craft can make outbound voyages to deliver loads or to take up station keeping at the destination. They can be used to haul cargo and possibly also used for human travel. Inner planets, for trips within the inner solar system, they can deliver loads and then return to Earth for subsequent voyages, operating as an interplanetary shuttle. For Mars in particular, the craft could provide economical means of routinely supplying operations on the planet. Solar sail craft can approach the Sun to deliver observation payloads or to take up station keeping orbits. They can operate at 0.25 AU or closer. They can reach high orbital inclinations, including polar. Solar sails can travel to and from all of the inner planets. Trips to Mercury and Venus are for rendezvous and orbit entry for the payload. Trips to Mars could be either for rendezvous or swing B with release of the payload for aerodynamic braking. Outer planets, minimum transfer times to the outer planets benefit from using an indirect transfer. However, this method results in high arrival speeds. Slower transfers have lower arrival speeds. The minimum transfer time to Jupiter for AC of 1 mm per second 2 with no departure velocity relative to Earth is 2 years when using an indirect transfer. The arrival speed is close to 17 km per second. For Saturn, the minimum trip time is 3.3 years, with an arrival speed of nearly 19 km per second. Ute Cloud, a small team had initially proposed a beryllium inflated sail that would go down to 0.05 AU from the Sun in order to get an acceleration peaking at 36.4 m per second 2, reaching a speed of 0.00264 c in less than a day. Such proximity to the Sun could prove to be impractical in the near term due to the structural degradation of beryllium at high temperatures, diffusion of hydrogen at high temperatures as well as an electrostatic gradient, generated by the ionization of beryllium due to the solar wind, posing a burst risk. Thus a revised perihelion of 0.1 AU was proposed to reduce the aforementioned temperature and solar efflux exposure. Such a sail would take two and a half years to reach the Heliopos, six and a half years to get to the SUNA Euro unregistered trademark S inner gravitational focus with arrival at the inner root cloud in no more than 30 years. Such a mission could perform useful astrophysical observations en route, explore gravitational focusing techniques, and image root cloud objects while exploring particles and fields in that region that are of galactic rather than solar origin. Satellites Robert L. Ford pointed out that a solar sail could be used to modify the orbit of a satellite around the Earth. In the limit, a sail could be used to hover a satellite above one pole of the Earth. Spacecraft fitted with solar sails could also be placed in close orbits about the Sun that are stationary with respect to either the Sun or the Earth, a type of satellite named by Ford as statite. This is possible because the propulsion provided by the sail offsets the gravitational potential of the Sun. Such an orbit could be useful for studying the properties of the Sun over long durations. Such a spacecraft could conceivably be placed directly over a pole of the Sun, and remain at that station for lengthy durations. Likewise a solar sail equipped spacecraft could also remain on station nearly above the polar terminator of a planet such as the Earth by tilting the sail at the appropriate angle needed to just counteract the planet's gravity. In his book The Case for Mars, Robert Zubrin points out that the reflected sunlight from a large statite placed near the polar terminator of the planet Mars could be focused on one of the Martian polar ice caps to significantly warm the planet's atmosphere. Such a statite could be made from asteroid material. Trajectory Corrections The messenger probe orbiting Mercury used light pressure on its solar panels to perform fine trajectory corrections on the way to Mercury. By changing the angle of the solar panels relative to the Sun, the amount of solar radiation pressure was varied to adjust the spacecraft trajectory more delicately than possible with thrusters. Minor errors are greatly amplified by gravity assist maneuvers, so using radiation pressure to make very small corrections saved large amounts of propellant. Interstellar flight, in the 1970s, 
Robert Ford proposed two beam-powered propulsion schemes using either lasers or masers to push giant sails to a significant fraction of the speed of light. In the flight of the Dragonfly, Ford described a light sail propelled by superlasers. As the starship neared its destination, the outer portion of the sail would detach. The outer sail would then refocus and reflect the lasers back onto a smaller, inner sail. This would provide braking thrust to stop the ship in the destination star system. Both methods pose monumental engineering challenges. The lasers would have to operate for years continuously at gigawatt strength. Ford's solution to this requires enormous solar panel arrays to be built at or near the planet Mercury. A planet-sized mirror or Fresnel lens would be needed several dozen astronomical units from the sun to keep the lasers focused on the sail. The giant braking sail would have to act as a precision mirror to focus the braking beam onto the inner deceleration sail. A potentially easier approach would be to use a maser to drive a solar sail composed of a mesh of wires with the same spacing as the wavelength of the microwaves, since the manipulation of microwave radiation is somewhat easier than the manipulation of visible light. The hypothetical Starisp interstellar probe design would use a maser to drive it. Masers spread out more rapidly than optical lasers owing to their longer wavelength, and so would not have as long an effective range. Masers could also be used to power a painted solar sail, a conventional sail coated with a layer of chemicals designed to evaporate when struck by microwave radiation. The momentum generated by this evaporation could significantly increase the thrust generated by solar sails, as a form of lightweight ablative laser propulsion. To further focus the energy on a distant solar sail, designs have considered the use of a large zone plate. This would be placed at a location between the laser or maser and the spacecraft. The plate could then be propelled outward using the same energy source, thus maintaining its position so as to focus the energy on the solar sail. Additionally, it has been theorized by Da Vinci Project contributor T. Pisando that solar sail utilizing spacecraft successful in interstellar travel could be used to carry their own zone plates or perhaps even masers to be deployed during flybys at nearby stars. Such an endeavor could allow future solar sailed craft to effectively utilize focused energy from other stars rather than from the Earth or Sun, thus propelling them more swiftly through space and perhaps even to more distant stars. However, the potential of such a theory remains uncertain if not dubious due to the high speed precision involved and possible payloads required. Another more physically realistic approach would be to use the light from the home star to accelerate. The ship would first orbit continuously away around the home star until the appropriate starting velocity is reached, then the ship would begin its trip away from the system using the light from the star to keep accelerating. Beyond some distance, the ship would no longer receive enough light to accelerate it significantly, but would maintain its course due to inertia. When nearing the target star, the ship could turn its sails toward it and begin to orbit inward to decelerate. Additional forward and reverse thrust could be achieved with more conventional means of propulsion such as rockets. Similar solar sailing launch and capture were suggested for directed panspermia to expand life in other solar systems. Velocities of 0.0005 AC could be obtained by solar sails carrying 10 kg payloads, using thin solar sail vehicles with effective aerial densities of 0.1 AGM2 with thin sails of 0.1 AA micrometer thickness and sizes on the order of 1 square kilometer. Alternatively, swarms of 1 m capsules can be launched on solar sails with radii of 42 cm each carrying 10,000 capsules of a hundred million extremophile microorganism to seed life in diverse target environments. Deorbiting artificial satellites, small solar sails have been proposed to accelerate the deorbiting of small artificial satellites from Earth orbits. Satellites in low Earth orbit can use a combination of solar pressure on the sail and increased atmospheric drag to accelerate satellite re-entry. Sail configurations. Icaros launched in 2010, has been the first practical solar sail vehicle. In 2012, it was still under thrust, proving the practicality of a solar sail for long-duration missions. It is spin-deployed, with tip masses in the corners of his square sail. The sail is made of thin polyamide film, with evaporated aluminum on it. 
it steers with electrically controlled liquid crystal panels. The sail slowly spins, and these panels turn on and off to control the attitude of the vehicle. When on, they diffuse light, reducing the momentum transfer to that part of the sail. When off, the sail reflects more light, transferring more momentum. In that way, they turn the sail. Thin film solar cells are also integrated into the sail, powering the spacecraft. The design is very reliable, because spin deployment simplified the mechanisms to unfold the sail and the LCD panels have no moving parts. Parachutes have very low mass, but a parachute is not a workable configuration for a solar sail. Analysis shows that a parachute configuration would collapse from the forces exerted by shroud lines, since radiation pressure does not behave like aerodynamic pressure, and would not act to keep the parachute open. Eric Drexler proposed very high thrust to mass solar sails, and made prototypes of the sail material. His sail would use panels of thin aluminium film supported by a tensile structure. The sail would rotate and would have to be continually under thrust. He made and handled samples of the film in the laboratory, but the material was too delicate to survive folding, launch, and deployment. The design planned to rely on space-based production of the film panels, joining them to a deployable tension structure. Sails in this class would offer high area per unit mass and hence accelerations up to 50 times higher than designs based on deployable plastic films. The highest thrust to mass designs for ground assembled deployable structures are square sails with the masts and guy lines on the dark side of the sail. Usually there are four masts that spread the corners of the sail, and a mast in the center to hold guy wires. One of the largest advantages is that there are no hot spots in the rigging from wrinkling or bagging, and the sail protects the structure from the sun. This form can, therefore, go close to the sun for maximum thrust. Most designs steer with small moving sails on the ends of the spars. In the 1970s JPL studied many rotating blade and ring sails for a mission to rendezvous with Halley's Comet. The intention was to stiffen the structures using angular momentum, eliminating the need for struts, and saving mass. In all cases, surprisingly large amounts of tensile strength were needed to cope with dynamic loads. Weaker sails would ripple or oscillate when the sail's attitude changed, and the oscillations would add and cause structural failure. The difference in the thrust-to-mass ratio between practical designs was almost nil, and the static designs were easier to control. JPL's reference design was called the Heliogyro. It had plastic film blades deployed from rollers and held out by centrifugal forces as it rotated. The spacecraft's attitude and direction were to be completely controlled by changing the angle of the blades in various ways, similar to the cyclic and collective pitch of a helicopter. Although the design had no mass advantage over a square sail, it remained attractive because the method of deploying the sail was simpler than a strut-based design. JPL also investigated ring sails, panels attached to the edge of a rotating spacecraft. The panels would have slight gaps about 1 to 5 percent of the total area. Lines would connect the edge of one sail to the other. Masses in the middles of these lines would pull the sails taut against the coning caused by the radiation pressure. JPL researchers said that this might be an attractive sail design for large manned structures. The inner ring, in particular, might be made to have artificial gravity roughly equal to the gravity on the surface of Mars. A solar sail can serve a dual function as a high-gain antenna. Designs differ, but most modify the metallization pattern to create a holographic monochromatic lens or mirror in the radio frequencies of interest, including visible light. Electric solar wind sail Pekka Janhunen from FMI has invented a type of solar sail called the electric solar wind sail. Mechanically it has little in common with the traditional solar sail design. The sails are replaced with straightened conducting tethers placed radially around the host ship. The wires are electrically charged to create an electric field around the wires. The electric field extends a few tens of meters into the plasma of the surrounding solar wind. The solar electrons are reflected by the electric field. The radius of the sail is from the electric field rather than the actual wire itself, making the sail lighter. 
the craft can also be steered by regulating the electric charge of the wires. A practical electric sail would have 50 a Euro 100 straightened wires with a length of about 20 a km each. Electric solar wind sails can adjust their electrostatic fields and sail attitudes. Magnetic sail A magnetic sail would also employ the solar wind. However, the magnetic field deflects the electrically charged particles in the wind. It uses wire loops, and runs a static current through them instead of applying a static voltage. All these designs maneuver, though the mechanisms are different. Magnetic sails bend the path of the charged protons that are in the solar wind. By changing the sails' attitudes, and the size of the magnetic fields, they can change the amount and direction of the thrust. Sail making, materials, the material developed for the Drexler solar sail was a thin aluminum film with a baseline thickness of 0.1 AA micrometer, to be fabricated by vapor deposition in a space-based system. Drexler used a similar process to prepare films on the ground. As anticipated, these films demonstrated adequate strength and robustness for handling in the laboratory and for use in space, but not for folding, launch, and deployment. The most common material in current designs is aluminized 2 AA micrometer captain film. It resists the heat of a pass close to the sun and still remains reasonably strong. The aluminium reflecting film is on the sun side. The sails of Cosmos 1 were made of aluminized PET film. Research by Dr. Jeffrey Landis in 1998 to Euro 9, funded by the NASA Institute for Advanced Concepts, showed that various materials such as alumina for laser light sails and carbon fiber for microwave pushed light sails were superior sail materials to the previously standard aluminium or captain films. In 2000, Energy Science Laboratories developed a new carbon fiber material that might be useful for solar sails. The material is over 200 times thicker than conventional solar sail designs, but it is so porous that it has the same mass. The rigidity and durability of this material could make solar sails that are significantly sturdier than plastic films. The material could self-deploy and should withstand higher temperatures. There has been some theoretical speculation about using molecular manufacturing techniques to create advanced, strong, hyperlite sail material, based on nanotube mesh weaves, where the weave spaces are less than half the wavelength of light impinging on the sail. While such materials have so far only been produced in laboratory conditions, and the means for manufacturing such material on an industrial scale are not yet available, such materials could mass less than 0.1 AGM2, making them lighter than any current sail material by a factor of at least 30. For comparison, 5 micrometer thick mylar sail material mass 7 AGM2, aluminized captain films have a mass as much as 12 AGM2, and Energy Science Laboratory's new carbon fiber material mass is 3 AGM2. The least dense metal is lithium, about five times less dense than aluminum. Fresh, unoxidized surfaces are reflective. At a thickness of 20 nm, lithium has an aerial density of 0.011 AGM2. A high-performance sail could be made of lithium alone at 20 nm. It would have to be fabricated in space and not used to approach the sun. In the limit, a sail craft might be constructed with a total aerial density of around 0.02 AGM2, giving it a lightness number of 67 and ack of about 400 mm per second too. Magnesium and beryllium are also potential materials for high-performance sails. These three metals can be alloyed with each other and with aluminum. Reflection and emissivity layers Aluminum is the common choice for the reflection layer. It typically has a thickness of at least 20 nm, with a reflectivity of 0.88 to 0.90. Chromium is a good choice for the emission layer on the face away from the sun. It can readily provide emissivity values of 0.63 to 0.73 for thicknesses from 5 to 20 nm on plastic film. Usable emissivity values are empirical because thin film effects dominate. Bulk emissivity values do not hold up in these cases because material thickness is much thinner than the emitted wavelengths. Fabrication Sails are fabricated on earth on long tables where ribbons are unrolled and joined to create the sails. These sails are packed, launched, 
and unfurled in space. In the future, fabrication could take place in orbit inside large frames that support the sail. This would result in lower mass sails and elimination of the risk of deployment failure. Operations Changing orbits, sailing operations are simplest in interplanetary orbits, where attitude changes are done at low rates. For outward bound trajectories, the sail force vector is oriented forward of the sun line, which increases orbital energy and angular momentum, resulting in the craft moving farther from the sun. For inward trajectories, the sail force vector is oriented behind the sun line, which decreases orbital energy and angular momentum, resulting in the craft moving in toward the sun. It is worth noting that only the sun's gravity pulls the craft toward the Suna Euro there is no analog to a sailboat's tacking to windward. To change orbital inclination, the force vector is turned out of the plane of the velocity vector. In orbits around planets or other bodies, the sail is oriented so that its force vector has a component along the velocity vector either in the direction of motion for an outward spiral, or against the direction of motion for an inward spiral. Trajectory optimizations can often require intervals of reduced or zero thrust. This can be achieved by rolling the craft around the sun line with the sail set at an appropriate angle to reduce or remove the thrust. Swing bys, a close solar passage can be used to increase a craft's energy. The increased radiation pressure combines with the efficacy of being deep in the sun's gravity well to substantially increase the energy for runs to the outer solar system. The optimal approach to the sun is done by increasing the orbital eccentricity while keeping the energy level as high as practical. The minimum approach distance is a function of sail angle, thermal properties of the sail and other structure, load effects on structure, and sail optical characteristics. A close passage can result in substantial optical degradation. Required turn rates can increase substantially for a close passage. A sail craft arriving at a star can use a close passage to reduce energy, which also applies to a sail craft on a return trip from the outer solar system. A lunar swing bee can have important benefits for trajectories leaving from or arriving at Earth. This can reduce trip times, especially in cases where the sail is heavily loaded. A swing bee can also be used to obtain favorable departure or arrival directions relative to Earth. A planetary swing bee could also be employed similar to what is done with coasting spacecraft, but good alignments might not exist due to the requirements for overall optimization of the trajectory. Smart lines A smart line could be a critical element of sailing operations. As with maritime ships, lines are essential for a wide range of uses. One difference is that some lines may be very long and need to be self-guiding. The lines could extend from and retract into the sail craft. A maneuverable grappling device can be used at the end of a line to place or pick up payload containers, to secure a ship to a structure such as a station, to pick up samples from an asteroid or comet, or to engage in towing. The maneuvering unit is like a small spacecraft, with many of the same sensors and control systems. It could draw power from and communicate with the sail craft through the line. These operations could be done autonomously. Lines a few hundred kilometers long may be used to move a ship from a space station to an orbit farther out where it could begin sailing. Towing Smart lines can enable towing operations by being able to attach to or release objects at the remote end of the line. Attached objects might be pulled into the body of the sailor or remain at the end of the deployed line. Objects to be towed may have attachment points that allow multiple sail craft to engage in the towing. Towing operations can include deflecting large bodies that pose a hazard to Earth, bringing natural bodies to Earth or other sites for resource recovery, and transporting disabled spacecraft or other structures. To tow or deflect a large body, poles can be inserted on the spin axis of the body. Sail craft can attach to the embedded poles using smart lines. Slip rings enable the craft to tow without the lines getting wrapped up as a result of rotation of the body. Projects operating or completed, ICAROS 2010. On May 21, 2010, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency launched the world's first interplanetary solar sail spacecraft ICAROS to Venus. Japan's JAXA successfully tested ICAROS in 2010. 
the goal was to deploy and control the sail and for the first time determining the minute orbit perturbations caused by light pressure. Orbit determination was done by the nearby Akatsuki probe from which Icaro's detached after both had been brought into a transfer orbit to Venus. The total effect over the six-month flight was 100 AMS. Until 2010, no solar sails had been successfully used in space as primary propulsion systems. On May 21, 2010, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency launched the Icaro's spacecraft which deployed a 200 m polyamide experimental solar sail on June 10. In July, your next phase for the demonstration of acceleration by radiation began. On July 9, 2010, it was verified that Icaros collected radiation from the Sun and began photon acceleration by the orbit determination of Icaros by range and range rate that is newly calculated in addition to the data of the relativization accelerating speed of Icaros between Icaros and the Earth that has been taken since before the Doppler effect was utilized. The data showed that Icaros appears to have been solar sailing since June 3 when it deployed the sail. Icaros has a diagonal spinning square sail 20 a.m. made of a 7.5 micrometer thick sheet of polyamide. The polyamide sheet had a mass of about 10 grams per square meter. A thin film solar array is embedded in the sail. Eight LCD panels are embedded in the sail, whose reflectance can be adjusted for attitude control. Icaros spent six months traveling to Venus, and then began a three-year journey to the far side of the Sun. Attitude control, both the Mariner 10 mission, which flew by the planets Mercury and Venus, and the Messenger mission to Mercury demonstrated the use of solar pressure as a method of attitude control in order to conserve attitude control propellant. Hayabusa also used solar pressure as a method of attitude control to compensate for broken reaction wheels and chemical thruster. Sail deployment tests NASA has successfully tested deployment technologies on small-scale sails in vacuum chambers. On February 4, 1993, the ZNAMYA-2, a 20-meter-wide aluminized Mylar reflector, was successfully deployed from the Russian Mir space station. Although the deployment succeeded, propulsion was not demonstrated. A second test, ZNAMYA-2.5, failed to deploy properly. In 1999, a full-scale deployment of a solar sail was tested on the ground at DLRESA in Cologne. On August 9, 2004, the Japanese ISAS successfully deployed two prototype solar sails from a sounding rocket. A clover-shaped sail was deployed at 122 km altitude and a fan-shaped sail was deployed at 169 km altitude. Both sails used 7.5 micrometer film. The experiment purely tested the deployment mechanisms, not propulsion. Solar Sail Propulsion Attempts A joint private project between Planetary Society, Cosmos Studios and Russian Academy of Science made two sail testing attempts. In 2001 a suborbital prototype test failed because of rocket failure. And in June 21, 2005, Cosmos 1 launched from a submarine in the Barents Sea, but the Volna rocket failed and the spacecraft failed to reach orbit. They intended to use the sail to gradually raise the spacecraft to a higher Earth orbit over a mission duration of one month. On Carl Sagan's 75th birthday the same group announced plans to make three further attempts, dubbed Light Sail 1, Minus 2, and Minus 3. The new design will use a 32 square meter miler sail, deployed in four triangular segments like Nano Sail D. The launch configuration is that of three adjacent Cube SATS, and as of 2011 was waiting for a piggyback launch opportunity. A 15-meter diameter solar sail was launched together with Astro F on EMV rocket on February 21, 2006, and made it to orbit. It deployed from the stage, but opened incompletely. Nanocell D 2010 A team from the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center along with a team from the NASA Ames Research Center, developed a solar sail mission called Nanocell D, which was lost in a launch failure aboard a Falcon 1 rocket on August 3, 2008. The second backup version, Nanocell D-2, also sometimes called simply Nanocell D, was launched with FastSot on a Minotaur 4 on November 19, 2010, becoming NASA's first solar sail deployed in low Earth orbit. 
The objectives of the mission were to test sail deployment technologies, and to gather data about the use of solar sails as a simple, passive means of deorbiting dead satellites and space debris. The nanocell D structure was made of aluminium and plastic, with the spacecraft massing less than 10 pounds. The sail has about 100 square feet of light catching surface. After some initial problems with deployment, the solar sail was deployed and over the course of its 240 day mission reportedly produced a wealth of data concerning the use of solar sails as passive deorbit devices. NASA launched the second nanocell D unit stowed inside the FastSot satellite on the Minotaur 4 on November 19, 2010. The ejection date from the FastSot micro satellite was planned for December 6, 2010, but deployment only occurred on January 20, 2011. Projects in development or proposed, despite the losses of Cosmos 1 and NanoCell D, scientists and engineers around the world remain encouraged and continue to work on solar sails. While most direct applications created so far intend to use the sails as inexpensive modes of cargo transport, some scientists are investigating the possibility of using solar sails as a means of transporting humans. This goal is strongly related to the management of very large surfaces in space and the sail-making advancements. Thus, in the near-medium term, solar sail propulsion is aimed chiefly at accomplishing a very high number of non-crewed missions in any part of the solar system and beyond. Manned space flight utilizing solar sails is still in the development state of infancy. Sunjama 2015. A technology demonstration sailcraft, dubbed Sunjama, was in development with the intent to prove the viability and value of sailing technology. Sunjama had a square sail, 124 feet wide on each side. It would have traveled from the Sun Earth L1 Lagrangian point 900,000 miles from Earth to a distance of 1,864,114 miles. The demonstration was expected to launch on the Falcon 9 in 2015. It would have been a secondary payload, released after the placement of the DSCOVR climate satellite at the L1 point. Light Sail 1 The Planetary Society's Solar Sail Project A ground-based deployment test was successfully done at Stellar Exploration in San Luis Obispo, California on March 4, 2011 with hardware and software adjustments leading to further tests. The configuration has four sail panels supported by four diagonal booms. The Planetary Society of the United States plans to launch an artificial satellite light sail one onto the Earth's orbit in 2011. Gossamer deorbit sail, as of December 2013, the European Space Agency has a proposed deorbit sail, named Gossamer, that would be intended to be used to accelerate the deorbiting of small, artificial satellites from low Earth orbits. The launch mass is 2 kg with a launch volume of only 15 a, 15 a, 25 cm. Once deployed, the sail would expand to 5 by 5 m and would use a combination of solar pressure on the sail and increased atmospheric drag to accelerate satellite re-entry. In science fiction, the earliest reference to solar sailing was in Jules Verne's 1865 novel From the Earth to the Moon, coming only a year after Maxwell's equations were published. The next known publication came more than 20 years later when Georges Lafarge and Henri de Graffigny published a four-volume science fiction novel in 1889, The Extraordinary Adventures of a Russian Scientist, which included a spacecraft propelled by solar pressure. B. Krasnogorska published on the waves of the ether in 1913. In his story backed by technical calculations, a small, bullet-shaped capsule is surrounded by a circular mirror 35 meters in diameter. It travels through space by means of solar pressure on the mirror. One of the earliest American stories about light sails is The Lady Who Sailed the Sail by Cordner Smith, which was published in 1960. In it, a tragedy results from the slowness of interstellar travel by this method. Another example is the 1962 story Gateway to Strangeness by Jack Vance, in which the outward direction of propulsion poses a life-threatening dilemma. Also in early 20th century literature, Pierre Boulle's Planet of the Apes starts with a couple floating in space on a ship propelled and maneuvered by light sails. In Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell's The Moat in God's Eye, a sail is used as a break and a weapon. 
author and scientist Arthur C. Clarke depicted a yacht race between solar sail spacecraft in the 1964 short story St. Jammer. In Flight of the Dragonfly, Robert Ford described an interstellar journey using a light-driven propulsion system, wherein a part of the sail was broken off and used as a reflector to slow the main spacecraft as it approached its destination. Ford's ideas were developed further in Charles Stross's novel Accelerando. In the 1982 film Tron, a solar sailor was an inner spacecraft with butterfly-like sails moved along focused beam of light. The 1983 episode Enlightenment of Doctor Who featured sailing ships in space that used solar wind to fly. In the episode Explorers of Star Trek, Deep Space Nine that aired in 1995, a lightship was featured. It was designed to use solar wind to fly out of a solar system with no engine. In the film Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones 1 is used by Count Dooku to propel himself across space. A solar sail was also used in James Cameron's Avatar. In the Disney film Treasure Planet, solar sails are used literally as sails for interstellar travel as well as serving for the photovoltaic gathering of energy for the jet propulsion of a steampunk-styled masted sailing ship capable of traveling through space. See also References Bibliography G. Volpetti, Fast Solar Sailing, Astrodynamics of Special Sailcraft Trajectories, A. Space Technology Library Vol. 30, Springer, August 2012, HTTP, www.springer.mechanical plus engineering 978-94-007-4776-0 ASIN, B-O-O-A-9-Y-G-Y-4-I, G. Volpetti, L. Johnson, G. L. Matloff, Solar Sails, A Novel Approach to Interplanetary Flight, Springer, August 2008, ISBN 978-0-387-34404-1, J. L. Wright, Space Sailing, Gordon and Breach Science Publishers, London, 1992. Wright was involved with JPL's effort to use a solar sail for a rendezvous with Halley's Comet. NASA CR 2002 to 211730, Chapter I The Euro presents an optimized escape trajectory via the H reversal sailing mode, G. Volpetti, The Sailcraft Splitting Concept, JBIS, Volume 59, PPA 48 to Euro 53, February 2006, G. L. Matloff, Deep Space Probes, To the Outer Solar System and Beyond, 2nd ed., Springer Praxis, UK, 2005, ISBN 978-3-540-24772-2, -2, T. Taylor, D. Robinson, T. Moton, T. C. Powell, G. Matloff, and J. Hall, Solar Sail Propulsion Systems Integration and Analysis, Final Report for NASA MSFC, Contract No H35191 D Option Period, Teledin Brown Engineering Incorporated. Huntsville, Alabama, May 11, 2004, G. Volpetti, Sailcraft Trajectory Options for the Interstellar Probe, Mathematical Theory and Numerical Results, The Chapter 4 of NASA CR 2002-211730, The Interstellar Probe, Pre-Perihelion Trajectories and Application of Holography, June 2002, G. Volpetti, Sailcraft-Based Mission to the Solar Gravitational Lens. STAIF 2000, Albuquerque. January 30 Euro February 3, 2000, G. Volpetti, General 3DH Reversal Trajectories for High Speed Sailcraft, Acta Astronautica, Volume 44, No. 1, PPA 67 Euro 73, 1999, C. R. McInnes, Solar Sailing, Technology, Dynamics, and Mission Applications, Springer Praxis Publishing Limited. Chichester, UK, 1999, ISBN 978-3-540-21062-7, Genta, G, and Brusa, E, The Aurora Project, A New Sail Layout, Acta Astronautica, 44, No. 2 Euro 4, PPA, 141 Euro 146, S. Scaglian and G. Volpetti, The Aurora Project. Removal of plastic substrate to obtain an all-metal solar sail, special issue of Acto Astronautica, Volume 44, No. 2 Euro 4, 
PPA 147 a Euro 150, 1999, external links, deflecting asteroids by Gregory L. Matloff, IEEE -E -E Spectrum, April 2012, Planetary Society's Solar Sailing Project, the solar photon sail comes of age by Gregory L. Matloff, NASA mission site for NanoCell D, NanoCell D mission, Dana Coulter, NASA to attempt historic solar sail deployment, NASA, June 28, 2008, Far Out Pathways to Space, Solar Sails from NASA, Solar Sails Comprehensive Collection of Solar Sail Information and References, maintained by Benjamin Diedrich. Good diagrams showing how light sailors must tack. U3P Multilingual Site with News and Flight Simulators, ISAS Deployed Solar Sail Film in Space, Suggestion of a Solar Sail with Roller Reefing, Hybrid Propulsion and a Central Docking and Payload Station. Interview with NASA's JPL about solar sail technology and missions, website with technical PDF files about solar sailing, including NASA report and lectures at Aerospace Engineering School of Rome University, Advanced Solar and Laser Pushed Light Sail Concepts, Andrews, DG Interstellar Transportation using today our Euro unregistered trademark S Physics. AIAA Paper 2003-4691A, www.iibot.org, Official Site of American Institute of Beamed Energy Propulsion, Space Sailing Sailing Ship Concepts, Operations, and History of Concept, Bandai Website Broad Information on Sail Propulsion and Missions